Hello friends, today I am going to discuss the water distribution system design using booster pump as a source of supply and uh, this is the excel sheet which I am going to use for that purpose. You can see here and there are other tables which I am going to use in here. You can see the hydraulic tables also and this is the example which we are going to cover in this session. So as you can see that we have a water service main line and uh, this is from the street main if you see that the building information it's a 16 story building so i have a right 16 story in here and the street pressure we need to write here so this street pressure how you will get this one you need to get this from the local authority of your area normally they are keeping the record how much how much is the street pressure so you need to write in here so let's say the local authority reported the street pressure is 45 psi in our area so now the next thing over here if you see here this is uh, this is the street main and this is the piping which we took from the street main that is water service line and then we have a booster pump in here and this is the suction of the booster pump this is the discharge of the booster pump and then from here this point we need we have taken the uh, uh, <coughs> water hot water heater uh, supply and this one is supplying hot water and then this one is supplying cold water and you can see that we have risers different risers here this is the riser 1 <coughs> represented at section H and riser 3 represented by section B riser 4 represented by section C and riser uh, 5 represented by A riser 2 is represented by F so I just divided the each riser and section uh, by sections you can see here this is A section this is B C section this is B and then this is section E, this is section D, this is section G, and then this is section I. I have divided this into different section in order because we need to calculate the pipe sizes for each section and we need to calculate the demand for each section. So the next thing we have to check here is the highest fixture outlet. So highest fixture outlet is 180 feet above the pump level. So we need to write this one in here because later we have to calculate the st static pressure for the highest outlet. That's why we have to uh, write this thing here. So next thing is you have to check the highest outlet pressure requirement. Since the highest outlet which we use is the water closet and it's a flush valve operated water closet. So uh, based on this we have to cal we have to write the highest outlet pressure requirement. If you see the note in here that is uh, system if the system is a flush tank operated 8 to 15 psi we have to use the operating pressure and if the system is a flush wall operated we have to use 15 to 25 psi since our case we said that water closet is a flush valve operated so we have used 20 psi this second case 15 to 25 psi we can use so we have used 20 psi in here if you can join the channel membership, you can get access to the Excel sheet, MAP softwares, MAP books. You can see the channel membership link is given in the video description. You can click join button to get access uh, to Excel sheet. Whatever the level you select, you will get material accordingly. If you have any uh, thing you want to know before taking the membership, you can contact on the email address given in the video description. Even after taking the membership, you can ask things on the same email address mentioned in the video description. So if you join the channel membership, you can get access to Excel sheets, softwares, MAP books, depending on what level you have selected for the membership. So next thing we have to check the length of run to the farthest and uh, highest fixture. So we need to write that uh, length in here. So you have to go to your drawing and you have to mark the lengths of each uh, section, riser and everything. So since we know that our water closet is the uh, highest and the farthest outlet. So up to that outlet we have to check the length and we have to write in here. Let's say we got 350 feet is the length of run to the farthest and the highest uh, uh, fixture is 350 feet. We have to write in here this card DLR that is develop length of run develop length of front DLR then material this is also very important so based on material uh, these hydraulic tables are 
prepared you can see here from table 1 14-1 through 14-12 there are total 14 12 tables i have uh, used here for sizing so material for water service into the building that is a copper k tubing so if you see here this is uh, water service uh, this is the street main and this this one we are talking about this is of type k copper tubing material for water service into the building this copper k and if you see the other one material for the water distribution system within the building is type l copper tubing so from pump discharge within the building the piping is of type l copper tubing so next thing we have here is uh, uniform friction head loss so we are going to use uh, uniform friction head loss in order to calculate the hot and cold water pipe sizing and we need to basically we need to keep two things in mind while we do the sizing of the cold water and hot water pipe sizing that one is uh, this uh, one is the uniform friction head loss which we set over here this one uniform friction head loss and the second is the velocity velocity has a very prime importance for domestic hot and cold water supply system design so if you see the note over here maximum recommended velocity for domestic cold water supply pipe sizing is 8 feet per second and for the hot water supply maximum recommended velocity is 4 to 5 feet per second so we are going to use 5 feet per second limitation in a case of hot water supply pipe sizing and 8 feet per second in a case of cold water supply pipe sizing so uh, if you are going for velo higher velocities if you are going to design your system on higher velocities which is not recommended uh, you will have uh, problems of noise water hammer cavitation uh, so that's why you need to follow this uh, velocity recommendation because we don't want to create any noise issue cavitation and water hammer so we need to keep these velocities in mind so we are talking about uniform friction head loss uniform friction head loss uh, normally we are taking 4 psi per 100 foot to 10 psi per 100 foot so we, which uh, we have taken 6 psi per 100 foot over here which is uh, like economical most economical design is like 6 5 to 6 psi per 100 foot so we have used 6 psi per 100 foot so as you are changing this uh, uniform friction head loss if you move to 10 psi per 100 foot then your pipe sizes will be smaller that means less insulation will be used smaller pipe insulation will be used that means you are saving the cost on the piping and uh, insulation as well but you are increasing the pump head pump head will be increased if you increase the friction head loss so let's say if i'm going to change this to 10 psi per 100 foot you will see that pump head loss will be changed there will be more pump head loss let's say this change is to 10 and pump head loss is increased there is 115.4 psi so more power will be used by the pump so let's change back to 6 psi per 100 foot now the next thing which we have to use, uh, use over here is uh, PRV installed the pump side. So there, there we have a PRV installed at the pump side. So obviously there will be a lot of fittings over here also like uh, maybe there will be some drain cock or something and there will be a water meter here. So you need to add these uh, values in here also. I added only PRV over here and this PRV pressure loss or head loss. I got this from manufacturer or supplier of this PRV so I need to uh, add this value here 5 psi if we have water meter over here we need to add the water meter head loss here also so next thing we have to add here is the static pressure for the highest outlet so since we know that our highest outlet is 180 feet above the pump level so now we need to calculate the static pressure for the highest outlet we know that one feet is equal to 0.433 psi so static pressure for the highest outlet is equal to 180 feet into 0.433 in order to convert this into psi it will be 77.94 psi now next thing is the equivalent length of run equivalent length of run for this this system 
equivalent length of run it will be the sum of straight piping length which you can see here straight piping length plus valves and the fittings used in this system so since we don't know the uh, sizes of the pipe so what we do we use uh, this uh, note we are going to use a thumb rule that is 50% of developed length will be considered as a friction loss for the fittings and the valve this is a thumb rule so we know that total developed uh, length for the straight pipe of the fitting is 350 feet we are going to add 50% of this 350 uh, as a friction loss for the valves and the fittings so how much our equivalent length of run will be 350 into 1.5 so total 525 feet is the equivalent length of run now the last one over here is the friction head loss how did we get this friction head loss friction head loss you have to get just simply multiplying your equivalent length of run with the uniform friction head loss uniform friction head loss is 6 psi per 100 foot and equivalent length of run is 525 feet so if you multiply 525 with uh, 0 0.06 you will get 31.5 psi friction head loss and what is this friction head loss this friction head loss is due to the straight pipe length plus fittings and the valves in your system here so the friction head loss is 31.5 psi now the total initial pressure it will be the sum of a b c and d i have right a here this one b c and d so we need to sum up all these to get the total initial pressure requirement so total initial uh, required pressure is 134.4 psi so now we know that uh, uh, static pre this uh, street pressure reported is 45 psi but in a case of peak demand you will not be you will not uh, get this 45 psi maybe 5 to 10 psi less so it is a good practice to take uh, 5 to 10 psi less than reported pressure by the local authority so i'm going to subtract 5 psi from this uh, reported street pressure in a case of peak demand so here it will be 40 psi now we need to now we can easily calculate the pump head how much the pump head will be so how we'll get the pump head we need to uh, this total required initial pressure minus suction pressure at the street main so if you subtract the suction pressure from the street main to the initial pressure requirement you will get the pump head so that means pump head is 94.4 psi and if you want to convert this into feet uh, so you will get 218 feet is the pump head here so uh, if you see over here the total water supply fixture units which we calculated here which I will tell you uh, later let me just uh, calculate the pump head and uh, total capacity so the total water supply fixture unit which we calculated here is 4840 fixture unit at this point 4840 you can see here so 4840 fixture unit we need to calculate the pump capacity we calculated the head but we need to calculate the demand GPM for this one so uh, 4840 fixture units so 4840 fixture units I will go to this table if you see the conversion of fixture unit to equivalent GPM this is for the flush tank this is for the flush valves so if you note that after 1000 uh, fixture units values are same for flush tank and the flush valves so our case we have to check for 4840 fixture units so if you go for 4000 we have and 5000 we have so we will apply the interpolation formula to get the exact value of the gpm at 48 at 4840 so this is the interpolation table which i have uh, this is the formula which i am going to use interpolation formula to get the exact value so we have 4000 fixture units and we have 5000 fixture unit and we need to calculate GPM at 4840 so as I'm applying all the values you will see the GPM calculated here so we know that for how much GPM we have at 4000 and how much GPM we have at 5000 
so go here 4000 how much gpm 525 and 5000 we have 593 so 525 and 593 so 525 and 593 it will calculate at 4840 so how much gpm calculated at 4840 582 gpm that's how i write 582 gpm and reference table is 13-4 which i use here this one so this is how you can calculate the booster pump uh, head as well as uh, demand so now we will proceed towards the hot and cold water demand so after demand we have to calculate the pipe sizes for the hot water as well as uh, cold water so here i used only water supply demand calculation for riser 4 which is represented by section c so in the same way in the same way which i am telling you now you have to calculate the water supply demand for other risers and other sections of the building so this is the riser 4 which i am going to calculate right now demand calculation so in riser 4 i i got uh, there there's a flush uh, there's a water closet of flush water types and uh, urinals we have and the lavatory we have so we have to write all the fixtures for each riser and section one by one and then we have to uh, go for number of fixtures so uh, how many water closet i have 55 water closets 15 urinals wall hung and 42 lavatories so now we have to calculate the hot water fixture unit and total hot water fixture unit now we have to then we have to calculate cold water fixture unit and total cold water fixture units and then combined hot and cold water fixture units so number of fixtures i write 55 here now i have to get uh, the value of uh, each water closet so i'll go to this table demand weight of fixtures in fixture units so we have a uh, water closet now and uh, 16 story uh, office building and this we considered as uh, and we know that it's a flush valve operated water closet flush valve operated water closet so occupancy is public uh, flush valve operated and you see that cold uh, there is no cold water connection on uh, water closets that's why there is no value in here so hot uh, there's no water there is no connection of hot water so that's why no value here so we have only cold water point in the water closet so value of fixture uh, unit is 10 in a case of water closet with a flush valve and total uh, fixture unit value is 10 so we are going to write uh, for cold water fixture unit is 10 value and combined it's also 10 combined water supply fixture unit value is also 10 so how we will get the total cold water fixture unit we just need to multiply number of fixture with each fixture unit value so we'll get the total cold water fixture unit value so in the same way you have to go for urinals and uh, how we will get the uh, total water supply fixture unit uh, we know that uh, 10 value we have calculated here 10 value you can see that combined for a total value of fixture unit is 10 so we have write 10 here so it's the same 10 into 55 that is 550 total fixture units so now i am going to show you for the laboratory as well total 42 laboratories we have and uh, each uh, total 42 laboratories we have here and uh, in the laboratory we have both uh, hot water as well as cold water connection so we need to write value for the hot and cold water so we'll go here in our table 13-3 now we have to check for laboratory so laboratory if you see here this one is a laboratory but this is a private and this laboratory is public so we are going to use this one public laboratory so if you see here the hot water is 1.5 cold water is 1.5 and total fixture unit value is 2 so we will write here hot is 1.5 fixture unit cold each fixture unit is 1.5 and combined is 2 so 1.5 into 42 you will get the total hot water fixture unit that is 63 and uh, 42 into 1.5 that is cold water fixture unit 
42 number of fixed unit into each cold water fixture unit is 1.5 so total is 63 ohms as well and if you see the combined we have 2 so 42 into 2 you will get 84 total fixture units the reason is so if you see the total hot water fixture unit at riser 4 section C is 63 and total cold water fixture unit at riser 4 is 688 fixture units so same if we have right here hot water 63 fixture unit cold water fixture units are 688 fixture units at riser 4 or section C and uh, the reason why I have uh, calculated the total water supply fixture unit because when we do the sizing for this section that is from pump discharge up till this point where the connection is taken off to the hot water heater so this line and the water service main will be sized based on total water supply fixture unit values that is this is only for riser 4 you need to calculate for every riser and sum up you need to calculate for every riser this for total water supply fixture unit value and write in here it is that is 4840 fixture unit so you need to size this this piping and water service main based on this total water supply fixture unit value that is 4840 fixture unit and uh, from this point you have to do the sizing for each section and riser based on the fixture units that is cold water fixture unit is the total cold water fixture unit at this point is 4730 and total hot water fixture units are 345 so if you see here uh, if you sum up the uh, water supply fixture units up till this point let's check the cold water fixture units so this uh, riser 5 or section A is 1376 plus we have uh, 688 here and uh, 430 cold water fixture units here that is uh, 2494 2494 at this point and then we have to some cold water 860 here 860 plus 2494 that is 3354 so we have 3354 cold water fixture unit at this point now the last one is riser 1 that is 1376 fixture unit plus 1376 so total cold water supply fixture units are 4730 fixture unit you can see here up till this point same way you have to calculate the hot water it will be 345 fixture units but as I told you from this point you have to uh, calculate the pipe sizes and GPM demand based on total GPA total water supply fixture unit just like we calculate for riser 4 you have to calculate for either 3 2 1 and then sum up and it will be 4840 fixed units so now next uh, step is we have to go for the cold and hot water pipe sizing and I'm going to use the hydraulic tables to calculate the cold and hot water pipe sizing you can see that these hydraulic tables there are total 12 hydraulic tables which uh, I'm going to use so let's go to the calculation sheet and uh, let me show you for any riser to calculate the pipe size so let's check for riser 5 which is represented by section A you can see that riser 5 represented by section A and how many cold water supply fixture units we have here 1376 I'm not going to calculate for all risers demand the way I have show, shown you for riser 4 represented by section C same way you have to calculate the demand for each riser and each section uh, otherwise video will be much longer that's why you have to calculate this is just a procedure to show you how you can calculate so riser 5a fixture units cold water supply fixture units are 1376 now we need to calculate the demand at this point so as i told you how we need to convert this fixture unit into demand gpm 
so how we will get this one i have used the interpolation table as i shown you before so 1376 this is a cold water so 1376 so we have uh, 1250 and we have 1500 so this one is for the flush tank and this is for the flush valve so our uh, this riser contain the flush uh, this water closets with the uh, flush valve system operated so we are going to follow this column the flush valve so 1250 demand is 240 gpm and 1500 demand is 267 gpm so 240 and 267 we have to write here gpm and we this one is uh, 1250 and this one is 1500 and we need to check uh, fixed unit value at 1376 so fixed unit value we have 1376 we need to check the demand so how much is the calculated demand at 1376 fixed unit this is the interpolation formula so which i have used here to get the exact value of the demand that is 254 gpm so now we know the demand at 1376 fixture unit so now we need to calculate the pipe size so now i have to check the pipe size so the table which i have used here is 14-9 as a reference table to calculate this uh, pipe size of 4 inches now i will tell you how did i get this pipe size of 4 inches so demand calculated here is uh, 254 gpm 254 gpm if you see here 254 gpm so since we if you remember that in the beginning i said that uh, material for water service into the building is copper k and distribution system inside the building is l so we have to check this l copper tubing 254 gpm so this is the l copper tubing and 254 gpm if you see that 240 gpm we have 260 gpm we don't have 254 gpm so we will interpolate the value for 254 gpm if you see that 240 gpm value is uh, this is the velocity column and this is the head loss column for copper l tubing so 240 gpm velocity is 6.42 and 260 gpm velocity is 6.95 so we will use interpolate uh, interpolation formula to get the value at 254 so 240 and 260 we have 6.42 velocity and 6.95 6.42 and 6.95 at uh, 240 gpm and 260 gpm we need to calculate at 254 gpm so how much is the velocity calculated at 254 gpm that is 6.79 feet per second 6.79 feet per second as you can see here so since this 6.79 feet per second is less than 8 feet per second which we said here in the beginning so the pipe size which we selected 4 inches here is okay we can use 4 inches pipe size now we have to calculate the head loss also we use the uniform head loss of 6 psi per 100 foot so now we need to calculate the head loss also at uh, this pipe segment or riser 5 which is represented by section A so same way we have to calculate the head loss so we will just write the GPM here, interpolation table, and we calculate the head loss. We'll go here, and now we'll calculate the head loss: 240 and 260. 240 copper L tubing. How much is the head loss? 1.9 psi per hundred foot, and 260 head loss is 2.1. So 1.9 and 2.1. 1.9 and 2.1 so calculated head loss is 2.04 psi per 100 foot so 2.04 psi per 100 foot so this is how you have to use hydraulic table to get the pipe size for cold water pipe sizing so let's go for another riser let's check for this riser 3 plus 4 plus 5 which is represented by e as you can see here in the drawing this this pipe segment which we are going to calculate now 
this is riser 5a this is 4 and this is 3 so at this point it will be the sum of section a b and c which is represented by and also as well as uh, d so d is basically the sum of uh, So D is basically the sum of uh, uh, this uh, riser 3 and 4 is represented by D. So if you see that total uh, fixture units at uh, this point, this point section E, it will be. So if you see uh, the sum of 3 and 4 riser is uh, cold water supply fixture unit 430 and 688. That is 1118, which is uh, written here. 1118 represented by D. And then uh, we have to add uh, this 5A cold water supply fixed unit 1376 plus 1376. So 2494. So total for cold water supply fixture unit at uh, section E is 2494. So we need to calculate demand first 2494 in order to get the pipe size at uh, this section which is represented by E so you can see here I just sum up this and in order to get the value so 3 plus 4 is represented by D so and we get the value of total fixed unit is 2494 now we need to convert this into in demand GPM so how we'll do this one so we will uh, I will go I will use the interpolation table again 2494 2494 and uh, if we go here and we will check we have uh, 2250 and 2500 so 2250 fixed unit 2500 fixed unit the value is 348 and 375 348 and 375 so 2250 we have 348 and 2500 we have 375 so how much is the GPM calculated uh, if we have a fixture unit of 2494 GPM calculated is using interpolation formula 374 GPM so we have right here 374 GPM so demand is done now we have to calculate the pipe size again and then velocity and then head loss we need to confirm the velocity should be less than 8 feet per second so now we need to calculate the pipe size first for 374 GPM. Reference table we use is 14-10. So this is the 14-10 table and uh, how much GPM we set? 374 GPM. So 374 GPM. So one thing I need to tell you first, uh, if you see that 374 GPM is also available in here. But if you move to the copper L tubing, and check the velocity velocity is 9.36 at 350 and 10.70 at 400 so 374 is also available in here but if you see the velocity is higher than recommended velocity it exceeds the limit that's why we are not using this 4 inch pipe size head loss although the head loss is okay but velocity is exceeding so we are not going to select 4 inch pipe size that's why we have selected 5 inch pipe size table 14 10. So if we go here and we check uh, 350 and 400, so we need to check at 374 GPM. So 350 copper L type L copper velocity is 6.01 and 400 6.87. 6.01 6.87 this one is at 350 this one is at 400 and we need to check at 374 so 374 if we check the velocity calculated is 3 point velocity calculated is 6.42 feet per second using the interpolation formula so we have right here 6.42 feet per second now we need to calculate the head loss as well same way we go to 14-10 table 350 head loss is 1.3 400 head loss is 1.7 so
1.3 and 1.7 head loss is 1.49 psi per 100 foot at 374 gpm so 1.49 psi per 100 foot at so if you notice that velocity 6.42 is less than 8 feet per second and one point and the head loss is 1.49 psi per 100 foot so both values are less than our recommended values which we which we said in the beginning so the 5 inch pipe size selected for 374 gpm is correct here so now uh, in the same way you have to calculate the pipe sizes for other sections now let's check for the hot water pipe sizing how you will calculate the hot water supply pipe size let's take uh, one example for this one so we are going to calculate the hot water pipe size for section G. So if you see that this is the section G and uh, hot water supply fixture units at uh, section G are 249 fixture units. So we have right 249 fixture units over here. Now we need to calculate the GPM for this hot water uh, supply pipe sizing. So how we'll get the GPM for this one? So same we have to use 13-4 uh, table to get the GPM. This table we have to use for fixture unit to GPM. So fixture uh, unit over here are 249. 249. This is for the flush tank. This is for the flush valves. 249. So 225 and 250 over here. But at this point for hot water pipe sizing you have to use the flush tanks not the flush valves column because we don't have water closet and urinals included in the hot water piping system so we have to use uh, flush tank over here this time for the hot water piping pipe sizing so we have 225 and 250 that is 70 and 75 gpm 70 and 75 225 and 250 225 70 gpm 250 we have 75 gpm we need to check at 249 uh, fixture unit how much the gpm value so it's same 75 gpm so we are going to use 75 gpm here as well so here we have used to 74 gpm so 74 75 so we will change this to 75 gpm so we are going to use 75 gpm here now we need to check the pipe size at uh, this uh, gpm demand so how much pipe size hot pop hot uh, pipe size will be so table which I have used here is reference 14-7 so I'm going to use uh, this table demand is 75 GPM so we have a demand of uh, 70 GPM here and uh, copper L type L copper if you see 70 we have 4.70 and the 80 we have a uh, 5.37 70 we have 4.70 velocity and 80 we have 5.37 so Seventy and eighty, and we need to check uh, at how much GPM. Seventy-five GPM. So velocity is five point zero four GPM. Five point zero four feet per second. Sorry. Five point zero four feet per second. So recommended velocity is five feet per second for hot water system. As we said, it is five point zero four. Is almost uh, five feet per second. So we can change the size to three inches, but it's uh, okay to use five point uh, two and a half inches because it's almost five five feet per second. So that's why we have used two and a half inches pipe size in here. 
so in the same way you have to calculate the pipe sizes for all other sections you have to calculate the pipe sizes for the sections the uh, as I have uh, uh, written here in the table so the last thing I have to tell you over here is you have to calculate the pipe size for the this section from pump booster pump discharge up to the point where connection is taken off to the hot water heater so this will be sized based on total water supply fixture unit as I mentioned you earlier so total water supply fixture units over here are 4840 fixture units so I need to do the pipe sizing for 4840 fixture units so let's go to the calculation sheet we calculated the total water supply fixture units are 4840 let's uh, we already know the demand at this point is 582 GPM so how let's uh, get the size let's get the size of this uh, pipe size let's get the pipe size for this demand so this time I'm going to check the table hydraulic table over here it's a 5 inch table and uh, 5 inch table if you check the demand here is uh, 550 and 600 so 550 uh, we have uh, 550 if we check the velocity is copper L tubing since this is again inside the building this uh, so we have to use copper type L copper so 550 the velocity is 9.45 feet per second and 600 velocity is 10.3 feet per second so again this velocity is higher than recommended 8 feet per second so we are not going to use 5 inch pipe size so we'll go to the next table 6 inches and then check the demand 550 and uh, 600 550 and 600 type L copper velocity is 6.57 at 550 and uh, 7.17 at 600 so 6.57 and let's interpolate and get the exact value at 582 so 6.57 and 7.17 7.17 this is at uh, 550 GP uh, fixed units sorry this value we have to check the velocity so 550 we have 6.57 velocity and uh, 600 we have 7.17 velocity we need to check at 582 GPM so how much it will be so velocity calculated at 582 GPM is 6.95 so 6.95 is the velocity calculated in here feet per second so the velocity calculated here is 6.95 feet per second at uh, 4840 fixture unit and with the pipe size of how much is the pipe size we selected here is 6 inches so 6 inch pipe size so 6 inches pipe size so this pipe segment from discharge uh, booster pump discharge up to this point it will be 6 inches so same uh, water supply fixture unit we you will have here 4840 fixture unit so same pipe size we can use in here so this is how you can design your water supply system using a booster pump as a source of supply so i hope you guys learn something from this video for more videos keep watching my channel don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon and uh, one more thing before ending this uh, video session if you can join the channel membership you can get access to the excel sheet mep softwares mep books you can see the channel membership link is given in the video description you can click join button to get access uh, to excel sheet whatever the level you select you will get material accordingly if you have any 
uh, thing you want to know before taking the membership you can contact on the email address given in the video description even after taking the membership you can ask things on the same email address mentioned in the video description so if you join the channel membership you can get access to excel sheets softwares mep books depending on what level you have selected for the membership so this is the end of this session